Okay, so that's three yellows, a red, a purple, purple, and two blue? Sure. Ha. Sure. I'm a sack of four. Hey! I get to I get to roll more blues. So let's Yay! roll two more blues. For an additional advantage. So I have three successes and three advantages. As you're playing your dulcimer, the sound of the waves and the thunder all mixed together in a rhythmic sound. You can feel within yourself the flow of the soil, the flow of the earth and stones even within you. You can feel uh, almost the expanse of life and nature going out. And as you seek out the knowledge on the scroll, you see that there is at least one word that is being highlighted and it almost seems to your ma your map your scroll gets wet on the word wraith the description reads roughly a creature or a person who is killed around water suffers not the water's wrath but finds comfort in it and moves through it, seeking revenge on those who murdered them. Lightning thunder claps against the window and hail pelts against the glass panes. Mandy, what does Ula look like? Can you describe her, please? <laughs> so Ula is short, like 4'11", but wears big, thick platform, like hiking boots, which you wouldn't mm -hmm. think are normally platform, but... You know, another three inches is good. <laughs> Long, dark hair and a messy bun, toss a wisp all around. I think that Ula probably left their apron, their leather apron that they normally wear, that she normally wears in the room and has just like the nicest white shirt and black slacks, suspenders on. So definitely not in a dress in this Victorian age, so that might stand out a little bit, but very feminine nonetheless, but still really their hands are very callous, big stormy gray eyes that are much larger than what you would imagine. Goggles still set on top of her head just to inspect things or to shield their eyes because sometimes they are quite sensitive because they see very intricate detail and what are you going to be doing while you're down here so i think that ula would you know have a meal and something to drink kind of look around and see if there was anybody who seemed like if the teacher was down here that i can't remember their name off the top of my head or someone or if there's a bartender like Ula's just looking to chat and get some some information Ula's definitely probably more of like not necessarily the spreader of gossip just wants to hear the gossip right like wants to yeah. he wants to get everybody's point of view because Ula's been around enough Ula's curated things for people of means and mm -hmm. understands that their society while they welcome her as long as she's making them something also knows that they are it's different than being with the folks of the people who work with their hands right so Ula's yeah. more of like a person for the people but understands how to also behave in polite society well enough I like it as you go up to the bar there is a female behind it what species is she? Oh no, why would you ask me such a question? She is probably maybe a uh, Ision? Does that sound right? That sounds great. Why not? <laughs> Another bird person, yep. Yes, an Ision. Hello, your feathers look very beautiful today. Uh, may I get a uh, fermented grape juice, please? Uh, behind the bar is 
and Isyan. She has gray Canadian goose, gray goose colored feathers. She looks to be of the stormy type and she goes, of course we have wine. Bottom, middle, top. Which would you prefer? You know what I say. I like to go from the top and work my way to the bottom. So let's start with the top and we'll work our way down. Wonderful. And she'll pour you a bottle of wine and she'll mark it down on a ledger and say, is there anything else I could provide for you? Is the bar busy? No, the bar is just the locals that are seem to be here on Harry. Oh, you ask her that. Do you ask her that or? No, I was asking you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, there seems to be the same amount of people that were here minus Fossil. So gotcha. the Kanara so... is playing on by the fire. There are two other Isions sitting at a table. There is a Grinker in the corner going through books. So Ula, Ula will probably be, she'll take a drink of her drink and be like, oh, this is so good. Yes, this must be top shelf. Where, where do you receive? Is this made local or do you receive it from somewhere else? That is a wine from Goldspire. I love Goldspire. Wonderful I know. place. It, 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 it's such a wonderful little town. Well, not little, but it's nice. It's warm. All the far, all the great fields, all the agriculture, all the all, all the wines that they produce. It's really nice. It's a. I think it's really going to be an up and coming destination point, kind of like here is up and coming. It's wonderful. Oh yes, so you have traveled some. Hmm? Oh yes, when I was younger, we traveled quite a bit. Uh, we would uh, flock from the north to the south and uh, from the east to the west. Uh, during the spring and fall. So, yes, I traveled. Wonderful. How long have you worked here for uh, Mr. Gunther? Oh, uh, I let's see. I've been on here for about five years now. Yes, five years now. Oh, that's quite some time. Do you know his sons? Oh, the, yes. Yes. Rally and Eth, yes, they have been through quite a bit. Oh, yeah? And how are they? Do they like the drink as well? Or do they stick to more uh, mellow tea and herb type tinctures? We don't have very many herbal type tinctures here, uh, drinkers. Mostly they they get they like the clay cups and uh, they like the big barrels. Oh, yes, the clay cups. This is what you're known for. I should have ordered that. Well, maybe I'll do that next. Oh, yeah, well, you can. Uh, but you definitely have a better choice of the gold buyer. Ah, thank you. That is what I like. And a bartender tell me what I need to know instead of what I just think I know. So uh, I have been summoned from the Mr. Gunter to uh -huh. help his sons. Wonderful. Do you know of, of anything that might help me in, in this endeavor? Oh my! I wouldn't presume to know how to help in an investigation. I, I, I am. I like to serve. I help out. I, you know, I pour drinks. I mix drinks. I serve. I cook. Uh, but well, as far as as investigating, oh my! I don't. I wouldn't know where to start. You might be surprised at what you know. So who does? Who does uh, Cantor and Raleigh like to drink with? Like, these, this is very good things to know. Who you drink with means a lot. Uh, charm check. All right. So I should be used to this by now. Three greens. Oh, let me click into the right place. Three green, two purple. Ooh, Ooh. another threat. <laughs> okay. uh, but two successes, so... <laughs> <laughs> she must remember them drinking with somebody. Oh, yes. Oh, uh, Raleigh and Eth. Uh, yes, they often would come in. We try to keep them away during the, the during the high times of the season, during the summers when a lot of the Anzas from Longvale would like to come out or some of the finer business people would like to come and stay by the sea during the summer and stare off into the vest. And every once in a while, we would even get some... Uh, some sea kith merchants that would love to come see the old chain where you know, they would say that their great ancestors would come and hang out, you know, 
We deal with the, the whole moving, rotating city of List. And we would often do our best to make sure that uh, those two boys would not be around. And so we would often uh, send them on errands and beer runs and mead runs and wine runs and food runs. And uh, <laughs> so sometimes so it would they... work, sometimes it wouldn't. So, yes. <laughs> so they're a rowdy bunch, huh? They make uh, uh, trouble for you? Oh, of course. Well, well, not, not necessarily for me. You know, I would have to clean up, but, you know, that's my job. And uh, I do my job well. Yeah, but sometimes with uh, different folk, it's easier to clean up than others, yes? Oh, of course. Some are absolutely. There are some people that are, the like, the best to clean up after. Uh, and that would be, oh, uh, anybody else here? Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, I'm flipping a dark side point. And a bell, like a little uh, handbell, rings off mm-hmm. into the distance, and she goes, "If you will please excuse me, I'm being summoned. I will return shortly." Oh, by all yes, take care of your duties. You don't need to entertain me. Okay, so I am going to look also for someone else to talk uh-huh. to. I feel at this point that people, you know, it's a small town, only locals are there, so people probably know why I'm here as well. Uh Is there anyone, when I look around, that either looks, like, looks me directly in the eye in kind of a way where, like, they want to talk, or does any, or does anyone, like, looking at me in any way? Kind of, like, spin around on the bar stool and look around towards the rest of the room. Yeah, let's do... A perception check, a vigilance check, a... Let's see, you're not under pressure, so it's not really cool. I kind of like perception if you're trying to figure out people. What do you say about that? All right. I mean, yeah. Yeah. What's the difference between vigilance and perception? Vigilance is like to tell if people are lying or be more uh, aware of what people are doing. While you're already in a conversation. Cool. Or, or... Yeah. yeah. And cool is is uh, keeping composure while you're charmed or flattered to not give ground when someone's uh, trying to schmooze you up. So, I mean, I think cool might also work, though, because I want to see that someone's looking at me, but also not mm-hmm. let them know that I know they're looking at me, like, right away. Does that work? <laughs> Deception? Uh, cool. I know. Oh, dis- oh, you're saying countering with deception. I'll do per- I'll do perception. I All right. Think. Uh, there's only two. Go. There's two greens. Let's go against two purples. Do you want any boosts? Yes, I want a boost. <laughs> because, of course. Because um, I have great big eyes that see really intricate details. So, uh-huh. uh, um, and also I can read a stone folk. So I feel like I can read <laughs> people's expressions really well. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. What are Maybe the boys? it's just this particular stone folk. <laughs> that also could be. <laughs> it, I like how in chat Andrew adds a boost because every, everyone has already had a few drinks. Ooh, I like that. That's what I, I like was that. hoping you would do one for one of those. Yeah, and this is just my first. And I haven't even drank at all. Exactly. <laughs> so then a yellow. So green, green, purple, purple, yellow. Do you have a rank in it? Did you flip? Uh, or do you have a no. rank? No, or is that is that a boost? Is boost or yellow? Yeah, right. uh, boost or blue. Oh, blue. Okay, so green, green, purple, purple, blue. Uh, do you have any other boosts that you'd like to do? I mean, if my big eye is and looking at people, then it works. Do you get something for being a? I get boosts in perception and vigilance. Oh. So you know, I guess. Perception would have been better. <laughs> yeah. Would, would you like to do perception but instead? But it's not that much better. I mean, yeah, yeah. I'll do perception yeah. and it just gives me a boost because I still only have two greens in it. Good. So another boost, which is blue. Okay. So let's see what happens. Two successes. Two successes. Woohoo. In the corner, uh, okay, there, the Kanara who you spoke to earlier, uh, Roscoe, is there. In the corner, he seems to be looking over his shoulder at you, but not looking at you, but looking over his shoulder at you, but not really looking at you. Uh, he <laughs> seems to be holding his clay cup against his chest and uh, 
every once in a while, he'll look like he's busy writing something down and uh, his foot's tapping and his ears are twitching. Ears are twitching and kind of one of them's almost turned towards you. And when, when you would look at it, it kind of tw- twists away a little bit as not to be uh, paying attention. But uh, mm. you keep catching his ears like he's paying attention to you. Do I know whether or not it is more like he's trying to get my attention or he's trying to eavesdrop on what I'm saying? Because those are two different things. Those are two different things. <laughs> I think he is, uh, he is, with your successes, he is trying to be unnoticed, but he is definitely trying to pay attention to you. So Ula takes up her drink uh-huh. and walks over to Roscoe. And standing up with their platforms to a great five two. Uh-huh. <laughs> walks, you know. She has a she's very thick, so she has a heavy step. Yeah. Right? And walks towards Roscoe. And I'm like, oh my friend, you're still here. What is it that you're writing? And looks you know, over uh-huh, uh-huh. over Kanar- Roscoe's shoulder and, and sees what they're writing. <laughs> oh, hey, Ula, 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 right? Right, Ula? Yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, Got a good memory. Yeah. Uh, hey, yeah, have a, yeah, have a seat. Have a, yeah, you're, please join me. Um, there's not much activity here tonight, so I don't have to sit here performing. I'm just, you know, I'm just writing my thoughts down, try to come up with a new song, yeah. Uh, what about the storm? And yeah, so that's what I'm doing. Yeah. What are you doing? Oh, you know, I just came down to have a little wine before I go to bed. It's been quite a, quite a day. I got to see uh, the master. Oh, yes. You know, that was quite a thing. And as you know, I'm here to find and figure out what's wrong with the boys. It is quite a conundrum, yes? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the master's been worried sick, worried sick. So can I see, like, are they holding back information from me? Like, is it, is, is uh, uh-huh. Roscoe actually just writing a song? Like, why, like, I don't, like, why are they nervous when, when I'm here? Why are they paying attention if it's not for, uh-huh. like. You can definitely tell when you ask if you can see it. Uh, you see him close his his little journal up real real fast and goes, oh, you know, you know what they say. An, an artist's mind is a terrible thing to pay attention to, and and you don't want to see my ramblings. They're you know they're they're not very easily digestible, you know. And I I kind of speak my mind, and I don't always filter what I, I I say and what I should say. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say no to my journal, but you know, you can ask me questions. I'm I'm almost an open book, but my, not an open journal. I guess that's <laughs> yeah. a distinction. So Ula puts her hand on top of Roscoe's hand as he closes uh-huh. the book and go, "Oh, my friend, don't count yourself so little." An artist describes the feeling and emotion of what happens with. You know, the society and the people that are like, you know, people like you and me, the working people, not the people of high society that just get by with their fancy houses and pretend like they just help us and give us scraps. Like, you are you are very good to the community and you sing and play and it brings life and happiness to everyone. I surely uh, a little peak of what you're working on amongst friends is nothing. Oh, well, you want to do a charm check or a leadership check? Let's do a... I was going to take leadership, too. Um, <laughs> well, either one. I mean, they're the same, so... Yeah, so... and you have currently four light side points, so don't be afraid to upgrade. Okay, so let's do leadership, and I will upgrade it. And the upgrade is to a yellow, right? One of the greens to a yellow? One of the greens to a yellow, correct. Okay. Versus two purple. Okay. Oh, that's a lot of things. <laughs> Ooh. Four successes, that's... two threats. Four successes. It's a lot of successes. <laughs> he puts his soft 
furry paw right on top of your hand, and he goes, You are absolutely right. We are more than what our people say we are. You're absolutely right. If you really want to know what I'm writing about, it is... He opens up his journal and says, I try to write a song about the storm and how we come and go. Something is always in the back of our minds, scraping at us and trying to pry its way out. Oh, that is quite a thing. How did you come up with such a tune? It's very interesting. I've never heard of anything like this before. Oh, it's it's really just what's been coming to my mind. Like, uh, you know, he looks around to the other tables and they're really not paying any mind to him. He goes, you know, with all the stuff that's going on with the master is just it makes you wonder about how we should be worried about what's going to be coming after us. You know, with all the things of how we live our life, you know, what is our beyond really going to be like? Just puts well, things in perspective. Oh, definitely. Who doesn't wonder about what happens beyond this fleshy body? But the scratching of the mind, that is a uh-huh, very uh-huh. peculiar saying where I have, I have not heard this before. And I've traveled many different places during very many different times. I've, I've lived a, oh, quite a full life. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, what's uh, the scratching of the mind? How did you get this inspiration? Oh, yeah. Well, I probably shouldn't say, but I I, I got the inspiration from uh, oh poor Eth, and uh, you know he kind of lost his mo- his hand in the accident, and then he never really was the same, and there was always that. Sc- scratching that he said he was started hearing and then the when he went missing then you know raleigh said he started hearing the scratchings and and stuff like that so the gnawing coin you know I, I, it, it really is just me reflecting on if i was not a good person here what's it gonna be like on the river and beyond you know oh I see. So you think that the scratching is something because they are naughty boys? Well, I didn't. You said it. I didn't say it, but uh, you said it. Okay, we can we can say this like you talk plainly with me. I will. I Ula is no snitch. All right. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You do not have to worry about Ula saying anything. I support you, and I support the arts. And Ula tips. Um, tips uh, roscoe <laughs> oh wow hey uh well you want you want to hear one of the things i'm working on yes roscoe i love your music play for me please all right let's see um uh he plays a little uh do 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 and uh he'll he'll flip to a page and he'll he'll uh it's one of his older in his book and yet the ink looks fresh on portions of it uh, well, there once was a fisher scum from the ducks below. He was fishing. He was a scum, yo. He would rob the coffers and help the women and children. He even kicked a poor orphan rabbit, and he'll pay his price. It's I, I, it's a work in progress, okay? Okay? I he like looks around. this. I like this. It's yeah. very good. Uh, yeah. It tells uh, quite the story, just in a few lines. Then it, yeah, that, it goes on a little more. Uh, one day, and you see him getting into it with your four great successes was pretty good. One day he was fishing for some big fishing. He grabbed a line and hooked a seeketh. Oh, seeketh, poor seeketh, poor cursedies, poor cursedies. Uh, what were you fishing for? Poor cursedies, poor cursedies. What were you fishing for? You were taken from the coffers. I helped the widow and kids of Rathkith. Where it came back and taught you a lesson it did. There once was a fisherman named Raleigh. Oh, I probably shouldn't say that part. That's all. Uh, uh, Perhaps you should say a well, different name. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Uh, it's uh-huh. a work in progress. He looks around, uh, goes back to one day. He was fishing and pulled up a seeketh of hand and he used it for bait and he won some fishing again. And so he goes on and, and you can surmise from his, he has no love for these two people at all. Oh yeah, very, very irreverent, him. which is... You know. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I probably shouldn't have said all that. Um, 
Huh. You, know, no, no, you know the way music goes. It's late at night. It's late at night. When the music moves you, you know that is what what you must say. Ula's probably finished her wine by now. Um, Rasko, thank you so very much. It was a beautiful song with such imagery. I felt like I was there. This was very good, but I am quite tired and need to go rest. Huh? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to flip a dark side point. Oh, no. You hear a sharp name of, Rasko, come uh-huh. here. And standing at the top of the stairs is Ingrid. <laughs> oh, um, uh, if if you'll, you'll if you'll excuse me, Ula, uh, ha- have 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 a lovely night. His his demeanor drops, his ears droop, and uh, he just kind of pats his musical instrument and leaves it on the table. And he says, uh, I'll, "I'll be right, I'll, I'll be right back." I'll just... Okay, okay, Roscoe. Uh, th- 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 thanks, thanks for hanging out. Thank you so much, Roscoe. Beautiful song. Um, Ula wants to leave the room that she's staying in in case Roscoe wants to like need someone someone to talk to right like in case uh, he becomes more open to say a little more about what he what he Uh actually knows not in song but in plain terms because again I am mechanical I use my hands I am not good with mystery and lyrical uh, imagery (laughs) back upstairs <laughs> it starts getting warmer as you you're done playing what do you want to do next i kind of set the dulcimer down i roll my shoulders and i look over the description for wraith and i think about it and i'm like there are two options here either eth is the wraith which would make sense with what we've heard so far with the metal on stone and the scratching and so on or Eth was the first victim. Now, I don't know which is the case right now. Hmm. And, uh, Fossil is kind of writing in a notebook that Fair have and pondering that question and thinking that maybe Ula or any answers that Ula's been able to dig up uh, could help in that regard. But, um, let's consults the now does the scroll tell uh tell me about what could protect against wraiths whether or not they're corporeal or incorporeal or when you're done playing the scroll will go back to dormancy the ink. dormant <laughs> yes and the translations will go back to being obscure so you wanted a knowledge lore you want to do a knowledge lore or knowledge forbidden depending on well, it's about undead, so I would think it'd be for It's about the dead. It so yellow, three. green, green. It'll be three purple. Okay. Lightning flashes and hail pelts against the glass panes. Sometimes the scroll says what it wants you to know. Sometimes the scroll is of no help at all. Hmm. This is one of those times where it is no help at all. Well, best put it away. And I take the little weighing stones off of it and I gingerly roll it back up and put it back in its case and close it and tuck it back away in my, um, my sack. (laughs) What would you like to do with your advantage concerning? My advantage is that I know other ways, like general ways, like silver, salt, iron, running water, though. Hmm. That if doesn't seem wraith, to be effective here. <laughs> that does not apply. So, oh, um, was Gunter wearing any silver? Was Gunter wearing any silver? No, he was not wearing any obvious silver. Mm. He was covered in head to toe with cloaks and warm things. The only thing that he exposed was his face, really, and his ice cold hands which were thin and shriveled and had no adornings on. I wonder if wearing some silver would improve his condition. Who knows? I think taking silver to Raleigh would be a good idea, though. (laughs) It very well could be. And I'm just going to pack everything away, and it is time for a rest. 
It has been such a long journey across the strait. Uh Ula is still gone. I have no desire to go join her. Not after this. So I just sort of tuck everything away. And then I think there's like one bed. And Uh I'm perfectly fine not sleeping on a bed. So I just like sort of curl up in a corner on the rug before the fire (laughs) and go to sleep. I imagine it's almost uh, gargoyle-like where you assume a position and you just stay there. (laughs) (laughs) Ula, the night is wearing on. What are you doing? Ula is going to rest, headed back up to the room. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to bed. It's been a long travel day. Talk to many people. So it's time to sleep now. Excellent. I'm gonna flip a light side point. A light side. Excuse Wait me. Wait a, a minute. <laughs> I'm flipping a death, a death point. No. In the middle of the night, the storm calms down. In the middle of the night, the fires go low. In the middle of the night, when the rains come down, there starts to hear a scraping and a scratching that can be heard. You can hear it, and you can almost feel it, as if when someone rakes their fingernails against a slate chalkboard, you can feel it in you, but you don't necessarily hear the screech. But you feel the scrape. Thank you for listening to Tales from the Grey Library. Thank you to AJ for running this adventure, and Erica and Amanda for playing it. If you're liking Tales from the Grey Library, be sure to listen to The Other Place and The Fenrain Files. The Other Place follows a new group of adventurers each season as they try to save the world from an apocalypse of the dead. And in The Fenrain Files, we explore the world even further from an outside perspective, looking down at its history, people, and places. Tales from the Grey Library is produced by Nightcast Creative. For more about us and the other things that we make, visit nightcastcreative.com.